What's up everyone, Steve here again from RC Tanks and Trucks 24-7 and here we have another little quadcopter for you guys this time it's the Esheen E013 Now funny when you look at these names, Small Pepper <laughs> I don't know what they're getting on about but anyway, the good thing about this guy is it's like a all ready to run combo because it comes with the goggles, the drone itself and obviously a little 2.4 gigahertz transmitter Now this guy is really really uh, well priced as well uh, I think Australian, it's like 80 or just over 80 dollars Australian, which what's that 50 odd dollars American for this package It's from Banggood, so I'll leave the link in the description if you want to go check it out So let's go open this little guy up and see what you get first up a Pretty comprehensive manual it looks like it's a big fold-out style sheet But I won't bore you going through this if you get it You can uh, read that yourself if you want some light reading. Okay, we get a fair few things here Like I mentioned you get a goggles controller and the little Drone itself, which I do like the uh, actual look of it, looks pretty cool, very light, and uh, yeah, it's an all-in-one little package. Okay, so the little drone here, it is obviously using brush motors, and they, they are 60151 s brush motors. Up front here, under this little hood cap there, so you don't scratch it, is a 1000 TBL M7 lens, 120-degree field of view H. 1.7 camera and that is obviously a wide angle camera as well now the battery that you get with this guy is a lipo battery 3.7 volt which is 1s and it is 200 milliamp hour 35c small 30 millimeter propellers up around here and also 5.8 gigahertz uh, 25 milliwatt transmitter okay let's have a look at the transmitter very cool tiny little design i've got pretty large hands and it is pretty small but uh one thing to note these little joysticks are metal now quick look around the transmitter this is your uh, different speed modes you've got medium high and low and they uh you can hear the difference with the little chirps but we'll see that later on in the um flight video obviously you got your normal thumbsticks normal controls doesn't have altitude hold as you can see but it is in mode two two buttons on either side are your trim buttons this button up here is your headless mode and this one here is your one key return now it doesn't say much about these in the menu it just says pre-find key so we'll see what that does later on but yeah there we go it is very small and it takes three AAA batteries in there you also do get some accessories small pair of uh stickers and they're the little ones that wrap around there that look like little eyes so we'll put that on later on what else do we get in here so a small phillips head screwdriver basic plug and play USB charger and also four spare propellers now in this box here okay we get uh, this is a strap for the goggles so we'll put that on later on when we open the goggles up seems to have some cleaning wipes must be your USB charger for the goggles because that has an inbuilt battery charger and a standard antenna there for the goggles as well okay last up we have the goggles itself Move all this stuff out of the way so we can get a closer look. Okay, so here are the goggles. I just installed this uh, basic antenna there. Nothing too special, but it includes a three inch LCD display with a resolution of 500 by 300 pixels. It does have uh, OSD, which uh, real time display of the battery voltage, which is really nice and also the frequency display. Okay, so a quick look around it. Up here we have our AV in input port. You got some ventilation holes all the way around the device because it doesn't have uh, inbuilt fans, so I guess that'd help with the heat, but I'm not too sure how that will go with fogging up, but uh, we'll soon find out. Down here you have a tiny little LED, and that is for your charging indicator. On the side here you have your little menu buttons. Uh, that's how you push for a scan, or you can push and hold to turn it on. You have your basic uh, plus and minus and a menu button there. And if you push and hold this button, just like that, you'll see it has a screen. And it is lit up, which is nice, it's not a blue screen. So, sweet. On the side here you have your micro USB charging port and uh, that's pretty much it. So that's what that little inbuilt uh, charging cable is for in here. You can just plug it in there, charge it up to any like, you know, your laptop or your cell phone charger or something like that. So I've pushed the menu button as you can see, brightness, contrast, saturation, input, and then it goes back to it again. If you push the on and off button again, it will start scanning for your signal. So there we go. So pretty cool little goggles you know <laughs> the package is over just over 80 dollars australian or 50 something dollars us so when you think about it it is pretty good value for money when you're getting uh, head uh, what goggles and the drone as well ready for uh, fpb flying so what i'll do 
let's charge everything up and we'll see how this little guy performs. Obviously it doesn't have DVR, so I'll use my fat sharks to record the uh, footage. But yeah, let's charge everything up and see how it goes. And before I start flying, there is the image from their uh, little camera there. It's not too bad actually. The only thing is this, the lenses on the FPV monitor are really close to my eyes like this <laughs> and it's, I know, have to get a little bit cross-eyed. So I think it's meant for kind of younger kids or kind of people with, I don't know, different eyes than mine because you cannot change the way that looks in the, um, once you've got the goggles on. So, you know, that might be a con for you, but it doesn't really fit my face very well. It's just a little bit too close. I need it a little bit further back for a bit better clarity. But uh, apart from that, the image is pretty nice on this little screen, 500 by 300 pixels, it works pretty well. And uh, I'll definitely hook up my fat sharks and get the recording of this. I'll use the fat sharks on my head because this one's a little bit too close to my eyes. But I just want to give you a, you know, a look how it looks on the camera. Let me get the writing there. It's actually pretty sharp. I, I'm pretty surprised about that. But anyway, let's go. Okay guys, now here it is. Let's take it out for a flight. I've got one little battery pack in there. We'll see how it flies with just the battery pack and then we'll do another flight just FPV. I want to just fly it around here so it's got a white backdrop so it's easy to see. So I put the battery in there, really easy, obviously like normal. Turn it on, you hear it beep and you just kind of push up and then it's bound ready to fly. Not going to bother with the headless motor or that kind of stuff but you have these uh, rates which you see here, that's medium, three beeps is high and one is low. So let's take it off. And one thing I noticed before, it is really, really stable in the air. Obviously, it's really meant for indoor flying. But, you know, it's, it works pretty well. Obviously, it is an altitude hold, but this is in beginner rate or low. Very, very docile little guy. And we'll bring it back down here so you can see it. Put it on two beeps, put it on three so we can actually get out of the breeze because it was fighting it a little bit. There we go. And it is very, very touchy. <laughs> there we go there. I'll get it down so you can have a look how it flies. There we go flies really really well considering it's not much of a breeze out here today but you know for the size of it it's tiny and it weighs nothing so haven't had to change any of the trims it's just going with a little bit of a breeze that we have at the moment but yeah flying well launch it again now this is in high rates that's what you expect top speed of this guy Yeah, not too bad for the size. So hard to see on the camera, that's why I don't normally do these little flying videos with these guys, because they're just so hard to see. We'll bring it back over here. Yeah, try and get it off that wall. And we'll try medium, or well, we'll try low rate. This is, this is low. That's full stick forward in low. Medium. Get a bit more of an angle and high rates. Bring that guy down before it gets blown away in the wind. It's got uh, one key return, so we can try that. From memory, it is get it blown away in the wind. Bring it back down here. Yeah, yeah, it, it just goes, I think, in the direction where you took it off. It's, it's more of a con. I don't really... It's not a, like a GPS return to home, but, uh, yeah. Pretty cool little fly. And it has a bit of a breeze now, and it's fighting it. It's pretty difficult. It's very touchy, that's for sure. Looks cool though with those little stickers on there. I'll bring it over here. So you can see when you you've got those little stickers that you put on there, they look pretty cool.
Okay guys, hope you enjoyed that flight footage. This good little guy performs really well. One thing I did notice that it is very touchy even on low rates um, with the yaw and all that kind of stuff. Even when you change the rates, uh, it has a more of an angle obviously for greater top speed, but they're very, very touchy. And maybe it's just, just, just the design of the sticks. But overall, it's a cool little controller, but for my hands, it's you know pretty small as you can see. It is, um, works well. Like I said, touchy though. The range isn't uh, the best. I had a bit of issue when I was flying, when I was doing the actual head cam footage of it. Kind of flew over the house a little bit and it just kept on going. Luckily it landed in the yard and I fetched it out. But even when I was doing FPV, it kind of went over the house a little bit and it lost range. You probably saw that in the video. So maybe, if, you know, 50 or odd meters, I think. Maybe even 100 in a clear line of sight would be all right. But around the house and stuff like that, through walls, it was a little bit weak. Even though it's 2.4 gigahertz, um, yeah, that was a bit of a problem. The FPV footage um, seemed to be fine, had quite strong reception. That was better than the actual uh, range from the controller, so works well. thing I noticed is the 1000 TVL camera here is, is really, really good. I can't really fault it. And even though this is a small 3-inch screen in the goggles here, the quality is really, really nice. Um, in saying that, the goggles aren't they're a bit too close to the screen to my eyes and there is no, you know, you can't adjust the pupil or the distance away from your eyes. So yeah, that's a little bit of a con for me, but depending on your head, it might fit a little, little bit better. But in saying that, the reception is good from this. The screen is nice and the build quality seems fine. It doesn't have DVR, so that is also one thing to note. But when you think about it, this is just over $50 all these things so you can't really complain about that. The flight time that you got with the battery here was roughly about four to five minutes depending on how you uh, fly um, but yeah great little drone perfect little beginner drone especially this is I guess perfect beginner uh, something for your kids an FPV monitor and uh, yeah because you can use your fat sharks and record the footage on your own but I love it very good any questions leave them down below check out the links if you want to uh, find out more and uh, thanks Steve here again from RC Tanks and Trucks 24-7. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.